Welcome to another episode of Trashy Divorces. Welcome to a Beach Week edition of Trashy Divorces from not our normal recording studio with not our normal acoustics. It's going to sound a little weird. The voice that you hear coming out of me today is not at all painful. It's not normal, Alicia. But it's not normal meat. Doesn't hurt. I'm just a little, a little rough. I should pick up oh, on our friend Erica Kelly. There you go. And do I really should have recorded just like that? Quite sultry. Quite sultry. Anyway, this is Alicia from Trashy Divorces. We're at a beach. We've been on a boat. We've been off a boat. We've, we've been fished, in a we've pool. Sunned, we've we've eaten. been on the sand. We've eaten lots and lots of delicious things. And uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, it's been a fun week. Now we're doing Trashy Divorces. And now we're doing Trashy Divorces. Who do we have but, this week? No. No? Just so... Oh, uh, the business. Just so you don't think that uh, we're not still kicking it every day with some trash candy. This week on Patreon, y'all, we did have so much fun. Yeah. So here's our secret little drop that you Patreon people already know about. Erica Kelly of the aforementioned Southern Fried True Crime Podcast was with us at the beach for a few days. So she was nice enough and wonderful enough to sit with us. So on Patreon this week, we had an extra big bonus where we covered the trashy divorces of OJ Simpson. Yes. And his subsequent trial trash baggery. Murder spree. Uh, Well, and crime spree. Can't forget about the crime spree after that. Yeah. His life took a turn. Oh, my God. Trash baggery over on Patreon for our friends over there. We did have some new Patreon people this week. Thanks, y'all. In our magic mirror this week, Emily, Kayla, Mallory, Ellen, Nancy, and Winnie. Y'all are um, are winning. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so so much much for supporting us over there. Now, what's on top? Is done. What's on top for this week, Alicia? Hey, Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise crazy. Just be glad it's him, not you. If you had Tom Cruise's troubles, you might be Tom Cruise crazy too. Actually, I'm really excited about this week. So, our episode title this week, Tom Cruise Crazy, by one of my favorite singer songwriters, a gentleman named Jonathan Colton, who you may already know of. He is the musical contributor to the NPR show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. However, if you're a super big nerd like us, you've known about Jonathan Colton for a while. He writes songs about monkeys and robots. It's it's nerd rock. Science, it's nerd rock and yacht rock and soft rock. Geek rock. Joko, you're amazing. You are our jam. If you're into any of the stuff we just talked about, he may be your jam. Please check out his talent. I have been waiting. When we first started the idea for this and talked about doing Tom Cruise, I'm like, I got our song. Done and done. Thank you, Joko, for all the delight you've brought to me. Probably not to Tom Cruise. So this week, all the intergalactic trash baggery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of trash cans. Billions of years of trash cans. Oh, my God. Billions of years. I covered the trashy divorces of Tom and Mimi. And Tom and Nicole. I've got Katie Holmes, who uh, defeated Tom Cruise and Scientology. Good for Katie. One fell swoop. You know how you know how she did it? She realized that she was in a cult, and she called, called her, her fucking dad. dad. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Y'all, I will let you know, it's podcast, no tears. Nobody shed a tear today. <laughs> there's, no, there's no tears with Tom Cruise, besides probably his own for his sad, sad life. Because his instrument can't find a fucking girlfriend. I'm in, I'm a little bit angry after this episode. He's, I'm a little salty. He's not a good person, and this org. I honestly, what upset me about this was not so much Tom Cruise, but any any scratching the surface of Scientology reveals truly horrific things. And, turn over um, that rock. Yeah, don't it's turn over. Ugly. Like, just steer clear, man. Keep on walking. Yeah, keep on walking. Anyway, that rock is not for you. Welcome back, everybody. This is, I don't know, love it or hate it. Um, <laughs> we'll be back to our recording, our regular recording for sure. setup uh, next week. And so bear with us. We hope that you enjoy the episode, though, because uh, boy, is there some trash baggery in this. You ready to hear all my salt? 
Yes. Let's do it. Cool. Let's do it. All right, Alicia. So you oh, are going to kick us off with it's bad. Uh, yeah, it's bad with some Tom Cruise crazy. I mean, we could just start with the cosmic trash cans, but I guess these are intergalactic trash cans. I, yeah. I apologize. That's intergalactic. <laughs> that's for sure. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Tom Cruise crazy. Our boy Tom, mm. born on the third of July, mm. nineteen sixty-two. Not the fourth of July. Not the fourth of July. He was born. not. He was not born on the fourth of July. Nope. He's a cancer. Sure. Seems to be. <laughs> <laughs> he is the only I th- son. You mean astrologically. <laughs> I do. I didn't even really get into the astrology on this because I feel like his religion would not approve. So I just, he is a cancer. Okay. He's the only son in a family with three sisters, devoted and hardworking mother by all accounts. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the opposite side of that, his dad is a real dick bag. He's got an alcoholic father who gets his kicks out from beating Tom. Cool. Like a lot. Cool. Okay, so healthy healthy foundation Super here. Super healthy foundation. All right. I mean this is I mean this is horrible. Yeah. Uh, Cruz has described his father as a merchant of chaos, a bully and a coward who inflicted beatings upon him. Yeah. Tom once said he was the kind of person where if something goes wrong, they kick you. It was a great lesson in my life. How he'd lull you in, make you feel safe, and then bang. For me, it was like, there's something wrong with this guy. Don't trust him. Be careful around him. Too bad he didn't remember that lesson maybe a little later in life, but we'll get there. So they move around a lot. And by the age of 12, this is the last time Tom sees his dad. Wow. Yeah. Mom is really struggling to support the family. Tom gets whatever job he can, delivering papers, washing dishes to help. He's working super hard to help support his family. And, like, where is he growing up, more or less? Like, I know you said they moved around a lot, but is he sort of a from Uh, Southern uh, California? or No, 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 no. New Jersey, New York. He attends 15 schools in 14 years. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, they're around a lot. You know, this is actually giving some context for, because he's ended up being a truly weird adult. Totally weird. So, Uh, okay. Yeah. So in this time is when he begins, they, they're highly, way Catholic, big time Catholics. Interesting. So he really does begin to turn to religion to find some comfort and solace. Like your parents getting divorced. It's hard. Yeah. You'd think you'd remember that, but it's a hard thing. And he actually enters at the age of 14 seminary school. He wants to be a priest. That's. Or a monk. Yeah. Completely fascinating. That doesn't last. Well, <laughs> clearly. Uh, he ends up going back to a uh, regular layman's high school, like not public the school. seminary. Yeah. yeah. And in his senior year, he plays football. He's a linebacker, but he gets cut from the squad because he gets caught drinking a beer before a game. So football's out, so why not go ahead and star in the high school production of Guys and Dolls? Okay. He graduates from Glen Ridge High School in Glen Ridge, New Jersey in 1980. Okay. So he's 18, and with the blessing of his mom and his new stepdad, Tom goes on up to New York City to pursue an acting career. He's doing the regular stuff, right? He's bussing, he's getting little stuff, and he's like, yeah, I'm good looking enough, I guess. He pulls a pit. He's like, I'm going to L.A., going to Hollywood. (laughs) Dreams come true. Dreams come true. You know what? I don't think we've ever had a divorce where, because this is multiples, one of our subjects, everybody he marries as an actress. Super weird. Hmm. Like, think about Elizabeth Taylor. She had businessmen. She had a senator, forgot. Like, it's weird. Anyway. Well, but who's arranging his marriages? Well, certainly not in the beginning creative artist agency, who he signs with when he lands in Hollywood. Sure. His first role in 1981 is a little film with uh, Brooke Shields called Endless Love. He lands a few supporting parts, gets a little role in The Outsiders in 1983, and makes his ginormous breakthrough in that same year in Risky Business. Dude's on fire. He's making his dream come true. And apparently he likes the older ladies. So in the early to mid-1980s, Tom has many publicized relationships one with Rebecca De Mornay 
only three years his senior. Patty Scoffla, nine years his senior. This I actually didn't know about Cher, 16 years his senior. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Well, she might have missed Sonny. Tom's mm-hmm. not very tall. And he, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right level. It, I yeah. I guess. Yeah. Anyway, Tom's dating around. He's having some fun. He's about to maverick it up on Top Gun. Yeah. And really go crazy. Mm-hmm. And wait for the next older lady to come along. She's got some plans for him, but I'm leaving Tom at the Trashy Divorces Depot for right now. He's Tom. We're not going to keep him waiting long, because he would not approve. Mimi Rogers, his first older lady, born January 27th, 1956. She is an Aquarius. Her father is a civil engineer. Her mother is a dance and drama major. Her dad also in 1952, guess who he's BFFs with? Oh, is L. Ron it a Hubbard. Scientol- yeah, okay. oh, yeah. L. Ron Hubbard. He's BFS with L. Ron Hubbard Gosh, and begins where auditing. I, where have I heard of that guy before? And uh, you've heard of him in season one, episode seven yeah, of okay. Trashy Divorces. What a trash bag. Okay. So dad gets involved with L. Ron Hubbard and his new invented sex magic cult religion. Like he's a founding member. So Mimi grows up with her parents going around the world to promote Scientology for the church. He's an auditor. He's an elder. He's a big, big deal. She graduates at 14, which when I see that means that she joined the Sea Org. Mm -hmm. They're a little complex, but I can't actually validate that. But she took a role in the church is what you're surmising there? Well, it says she worked as a part-time social worker with substance abuse counseling, but what it really sounds like to me that she's doing is recruiting addicts verbiage, right? She has an early marriage at the age of 20 to Jim Rogers, but she becomes a highly trained auditor with Scientology. She audits Sonny Bono. It's all weird. She and her husband, Jim open an enhancement center. So not the celebrity center. They're not quite there yet, but the enhancement center to recruit. The marriage with Jim breaks up after about four years. And now that you're single, let's go ahead and act. Everybody else does. Like, it's all shady. Her mom's super supportive, encourages Mimi to pursue her dream of acting. And Mimi moves in with this really sweet girl named Kirstie Alley, their roommates, when they land in Hollywood and this start is, out. This is, like, this is like watching an infection play out in a population. <laughs> this is a virus. Contaminated. Okay. Kirstie Alley. Mimi lands... Yeah, Mimi lands some parts. But the interesting I found is all the roles that she tried out for and didn't get. She tried out for Body Heat, went to Kathleen Turner. She tried out for Fatal Attraction, which went to Glenn Close. She does get her breakthrough role in Someone to Watch Over Me, really, in 1987. But there is a dinner party in 1985. There's always a dinner party. Be careful who you dinner party with. Sure. Mimi at the time is dating a friend of Tom's meets at the dinner party and they like each other. They start dating. Tom says he's not ready for marriage. Like it's too early for him. But, uh, (laughs) David Miscavige is now in charge of Scientology after he kind of ousts L Ron in the mid early mid eighties. And Miscavige in 1986 announces at this big Scientology rally that, uh, The church is about to get the biggest fish they've ever hooked. Yeah, we're landing a whale. We're landing a whale. So I know we've talked before in Trashy Divorces about, like, be careful, don't marry your poster on the wall. Yeah. In this case, the poster on the wall is not like Teen Idol, Teen Beat. It's like Uncle Sam because they are targeting and recruiting Tom Cruise. Right. Via Mimi Rogers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, Scientology has this little program called Project Celebrity, which has been around at least since 1955 when L. Ron Hubbard invented it. There are rewards to Scientologists who recruit targeted celebrities. They have a whole list of people they are legit going after. A 1976 Scientology policy letter states that, quote, Rehabilitation of celebrities who are just beyond or just approaching their prime enables rapid dissemination of Scientology. 
It's all bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. L. Ron Hubbard says celebrities are very special people and have a direct, a distinct line of dissemination. They have comm lines. That's communication lines for lay people, for us, for SPs. Sorry. Uh huh. Suppressive, Suppressive people, persons. persons. Yeah. They have comm lines that others do not have and many medias to get their dissemination through. Okay. I did find a quote. Hugh B. Urban, who's a professor of religious studies at Ohio State University, says this. He thinks the reason that celebrities would be interested in Scientology is that it pretty well fits with the celebrity kind of personality. It's very individualistic. It celebrates your individual identity as ultimately divine. It claims to give you ultimate power over your own mind, self-destiny, So it fits well with an actor's personality and targeting celebrities. These aren't necessarily people who need more wealth, but what they do need or often want at least is some kind of spiritual validation for their wealth and lifestyle. And Scientology says it's a okay to be wealthy and famous. And you know what? Because you are those two things, that is a sign of your spiritual development. It's cult. Okay. It's a call. I mean, it's a, it's, t- oh my God. So the targeting in Project Celebrity works because Mimi and yes. Tom do get married yes. in upstate New York, May 9th, 1987. Yeah. And I would also, I mean, we could note that Mormonism has a similar characteristic in that Mormons promote clean living and success in business. And so you get a family like, you know, Mitt Romney's family, very successful business people, wealthy, really poster children for mormonism sure it's not it's not completely dissimilar from what scientology is doing here like we want famous people to hawk our junk <laughs> we are so loose at beach week okay so loose okay go ahead they get married may 9th 1987 plan works emilio estevez is tom's best man tom's mom is delighted she thinks her new daughter oh, sure. is top notch no doubt And it begins. And y'all, you know it's coming, and it does. Mimi's like, hey, come on down to my auditing center and let's get you hooked up with some of this uh, Scientology sex cult magic. She takes Tom under her wing, and the indoctrination begins. Yeah. I guess things are cool for a small period of time, but eventually Tom is so super cool, and like, Top Gun's out. There's not a bigger movie star in the world. He leaves her piddly little enhancement center and gets recruited to go on over to the Celebrity Center. Yes. Which, as our Patreon listeners know, because we did a whole thing on it, was originally owned and built by the widow of Thomas Entz, who died on William Randolph Hearst's boat. Back in the 20s. 1924. Anyway, Celebrity Center. It's a big deal. Mimi just needed to land up. Because apparently the marriage bonds are pretty broken down by the end of 1989. Or maybe he meets a cute girl on his next movie set. And his BFF, David Miscavige, is like, Hey, we can overthrow Mimi, no problem. She's not that important to our plan for you. You need out? Good God. We got you. These people are so calculating. Okay. So in January of 1990, the couple releases a joint statement. Mm. While there have been very positive aspects to our marriage, there were some issues which could not be resolved, even after working on them for a period of time. Their divorce was finalized February 4th, 1990. Okay. So, let's dish a little here. Yeah, let's dish a little here. Mimi is asked by Playboy in 1993 why it all ended. And she kind of, she's mad. Because I guess, like, Playboy said what they said. And she's like, oh, is that the story? That I was bored with the child and threw him over, chewed him up, and spat him out? Well, here's the real story. Tom was seriously thinking of becoming a monk. At least for that period of time, it looked as though marriage wouldn't fit into his overall spiritual need. He thought he had to be celibate to maintain the purity of his instrument. My instrument needed tuning. Wow. I can't. Wow. Is that the full quote? Yes. Or, okay. Okay. Now, 
that's brutal. Later, I guess, just to play along with the Scientology game, she's like, oh, that was taken very out of context. But It was, a, it was pretty much in context, I think. The what's, purity of his instrument. What's interesting about that is, as far as I know, his subsequent ex-wives have never said an unkind word about him, which I think they are not contractually allowed to... I think it's part of their. What I have found. Yes. Yeah, so that yeah. it's interesting that she took a swipe at him in the press because in that was it was that was never allowed to happen again. Well, I guess it wasn't tied down quite as hardcore as it is now. So other rumors. Well, of, it, they probably learned from that. Like, yeah. Oh, we no, <laughs> no. You gotta we got to sign it up. We got language in our divorce settlements that does That's not right. allow that. Other rumors, like he became too big of a star. Okay, here's what's funny. I remember when they got married and everybody's like, oh, she's so much older. You know how much older she is? Six years. Hmm. So it's remarkable to me that this was actually such a talking point. Like, she's clearly a geriatric person dating a, you know, (laughs) pony boy. Sure, sure. Jesus. Okay, so she says stardom wasn't really a problem. What did annoy me, though, was the age thing. Some of the tabloids brought it up all the time and exaggerated the gap between Tom and me. Every six months, they added a year to my age. Uh, And this is when she's 45 that she says this. If Tom and I were still married, the tabloids would have me in my 60s by now. Which is true. Like, she was made out to be like the old hag. Cougaring. Yeah. Six years. It's It's not a big, yeah. So, no matter, like, don't feel bad for Mimi. She's already living with her next lover. I mean, the bigger problem is that Tom Cruise is only, like, five foot two. He just, he's just a little guy. He's a little guy. He's just a cute little guy. A little kitten. <laughs> little kitten Tom. So, no matter, she's already living with her next lover by the end of the divorce. They get married in 2003. They're still married. They have two kids. And, oh, yeah, in the early 2000s. Mimi decides to take up competitive poker and sits on the board of the World Poker Tour. Serious? Yeah, she's placed in the money in a few tournaments. Okay. I also think about that time, early 2000s, that the uh, World Poker Tour is probably a terrific place to recruit new Scientology members. Think about it. It's not a stretch. I mean, you may be good at poker, you may enjoy it, but what an entrance to find celebrity culture with a lot of money who needs some validation. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. According to the latest details that I can find, Mimi has actually left the church. She's out. That is surprising and surprisingly good news. Surprisingly good news. She apparently feels in a very similar fashion to David Miscavige in the way that everyone else feels that's not David Miscavige or Tom Cruise. hmm So... David's really been causing problems in the organization as of late. There are a lot of people who don't really agree with his leadership. Mm -hmm. And where the fuck is your wife, dude? Where's Shelly? I'm just saying. Like, can you, how weird must her life be? Like, you're indoctrinated in that from birth. Right. Your dad, for five years before you're born, is a founding member of Scientology. And now, I don't know. It's got to be very untethered. It's interesting to think about. Yeah, I get the feeling that, uh, there are a lot of people who chafe at Miss Cavage's rule or yeah. whatever. Anyway, she's flown the coop. Good for her. Marriage number one. Happy to hear it. Sad she got Tom Cruise wrapped up in it because, boy, did he not need... We can all blame her because it's stark. Hooks her in. All right, next up. Next up. Sweet Nicole. Love her. She's born June 20th, 1967. She's a Gemini. She's wonderful. She's born in Hawaii, where her Australian parents are there on student visas. Her dad, check this, is a biochemist, clinical psychologist, and an author. Hmm. Mom is a nursing instructor, and she edits all of her husband's work. Nicole is given the Hawaiian name Hokulani, meaning heavenly star. The inspiration came from a baby elephant born around the same time at the Honolulu Zoo. Are you kidding me? No, okay. I'm not. I love everything about this. Oh, it gets so much better. Mm-hmm. So the Kidmans hang out in the States for a while. They are ardent. They actually head up to down to D.C. They're ardent protesters of the Vietnam War. They eventually move on back to Sydney. 
Nicole is into ballet and acting. She is inspired to become an actress by Margaret Hamilton's performance in The Wizard of Oz, Wicked Witch of the West. Okay. But Nicole's super shy, and I guess acting helps her with part of this. She studies at the Phillip Street Theater with her friend Naomi Watts and attends the Australian Theater for Young People. She takes up drama, mime, she performs in her teens, and begins to really find a refuge in acting. The one thing exception they did make, I guess the Phillip Street Theater, and somebody in Australia told me this because I thought this was neat, because of her fair skin and red hair, the Australian son forces Nicole to rehearse in the halls of the theater. She can't, I guess it's an, an outdoor space. So she has to find cover. She has to find cover, she'll otherwise burn. she'll burn. Mm-hmm. That, well, you know. She gets regular encouragement, a lot of praise. This is the bugs bit. And in 1983, at age 16, right around the same time we have her future hubby taking on the United States, we have Sweet Nicole making her film debut in the remake of the Australian holiday season favorite, Bush Christmas. <laughs> But that's not the best thing that happens in 1983. All of our Australian friends know exactly the best thing that happens in 1983, which is Nicole's appearance in BMX Bandits. <laughs> BMX Bandits for life, yo. She's so charming. Shout out to uh, Emily Higgins and Tasteless Podcast, which has completely covered BMX Bandits. BMX Bandits. Nicole's mom is diagnosed with breast cancer in 1984, and Nicole puts her acting career on hold to help her mom with treatment and therapy and mom recovers and Nicole's like doing what young actresses do. She's getting all the parts. She plays in a little soap opera called a country practice. She gets regular TV programs and movie spots. She really makes her American splash in a little movie called dead calm. Mm-hmm. We remember that movie. No. Oh God. We got to watch Maybe. it. It was terrific okay. and terrifying. Oh, it was a breakout role. She was amazing. She does so great. She gets her next role in 1990's Days of Thunder. Heard of it. She meets a guy on the set, right? Poster on the wall time again, (laughs) y'all. By all accounts, Tom and Nicole meet, fall head over heels. Maybe she gets his libido going. Maybe his instrument responds. I don't know. They actually really did seem like a love match at the time. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He proposes... As soon as the divorce from Mimi is final. So that divorce final in February, he proposes they marry Christmas Eve, 1990. How long had they dated? A year. Yeah, he's got some impulse control issues. You think? (laughs) Just letting you know, this very short timeline is going to reappear later. So Nicole says he basically swept me off my feet. She tells us to Vanity Fair in 2002. I fell madly, passionately in love. As it happens when you fall in love, my whole plan in terms of what I wanted for my life, I was like, forget it. This is it. I was consumed by it willingly. I was desperate to have a baby with him. I didn't care if we were married. That's what I wish I'd done. Anyway. Wow. Poor Nicole. There is a very early ectopic Yes, ectopic. Perfect. I wanted to make sure I did that word right. Pregnancy that Nicole does suffer. And after this, they adopt their first child, Isabella, in 1992. She is a child of a member of the church. Yeah, we're not going to say they steal babies, but... It feels a little Some weird. Some might say they steal babies. We would never say that they steal babies. But they needed a baby and they got a Boom. baby. So it feels a little weird, but yay, congratulations. Sure. The couple adopts another child, Connor, hmm. in 1995. This one also just magically appeared when they wanted a baby? They need, it's like the Scientology baby stork. Hmm. Maybe you pray to Zulu, hmm. Zenu? Zenu. To get a baby and one just lands on just your door, like Harry fucking Potter, go man. Go to the Scientology yeah. ba- baby mart. Yeah, yeah. Pick it out. Grab one. What do you want? I'm certain they're not baby stealers. Um, okay. It's not what we're saying. Okay. That's, yeah. Things are going great Dude. for them. They're starring in films together. They do Far and Away together and Eyes Wide Shut. 
Oh, geez. Cruz says, our marriage is stronger because of it. Our friendship is deeper. Nicole, all I can say is I hope we're together when we're 80. I can't say we will be, but I'll be so devastated if we're not. Well, Turns out, we have bad news for you, Nicole. I'm not sure if y'all know how the story goes down, <laughs> but they're not. They're not. 2001 starts out pretty great. Nicole's pregnant again, which is awesome. And now is the time, and all this time of great celebration, mm-hmm. Tom picks to file for divorce. Yeah, just out of the blue. She's blindsided. Mm-hmm. No indication this is happening. Mm-hmm. After the couple is divorced, it's later claimed that, uh, oh, guess who again? Tom's BFF. David Miscavige. Miscavige? Uh, had been asked to, quote unquote, facilitate the breakup between them. Seriously. Yeah. That dude is problematic. Let's say that. Let's say he's problematic. Cruz's auditor, the guy he confesses his all of his secrets That's, and sins to, yeah. said the actor asked him to wiretap Nicole as well and put surveillance out on her. Tom cites irreconcilable differences. As you do. Their longtime rep, February 5th, 2001, says citing the difficulties inherent in diverging careers which constantly keeps them apart they concluded an amicable separation the best for both of them at this time well it was the best thing for one of them at this time because the other one didn't know the fuck it was coming and those two kids have not spoken to her since basically we're going to talk about it yeah tom requests joint custody of connor and isabella don't do it Seriously, Uh don't do it. But he did, or she did. Yeah, after 12 years and eight months of marriage, it's pretty ugly. Tom implies Nicole had done something nefarious. So, like, people would ask, why are you getting divorced? Ask Nicole. She knows. Yeah. (laughs) So shitty. To avoid the equitable split of assets that California law mandates after 10 years of marriage... Tom claims they'd only been married nine years and 11 months. Right. I do remember at the time that, like, again, it was this shocker, and it was right before that statutory limit that would entitle the, yeah. Not to be outdone, Nicole is like, hey, wait, I have the placenta from my recent miscarriage because she did miscarry the child she was pregnant with. My jaw's hanging. Yeah, um, I, I've got the placenta. She has the placenta. Uh-huh, and I can prove he's the father, and this is not on his timetable that he said. They end up settling 50-50. Tom gets the kids. She is very kind to him, mm-hmm. and I think very tied by contractual mm-hmm. obligations. I think so. I th- Yeah, my guess is that... Her only hope of ever, of those kids ever, ever reconsidering having a relationship with her is that she can never breathe an unkind word in public about their dad. Or Scientology, for that matter. Those children don't want any... I know, I know, but I mean, perhaps one day, like, right? Like, I think she is, I think she is making sure to, all she can do is leave doors open. Be as kind as possible. Yes. That's true. Well, she is quoted, oh, we were so young. You know, like she gives it every other reason besides he's in a cult. And was she, I I assume she was practicing Scientology when she was his wife, but she was never. Yeah, I think maybe she disagreed with some of the uh, fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, Tom, I just hate this all. Tom tells Vanity Fair in October 2001. She knows why. I know why. She's the mother of my children. I wish her well. I think you just move on. And I don't say that lightly. I don't say that with anything. But things happen in life. You do everything you can in every possible way. And there's just a point at which you somehow to sometimes have to face the brutal reality. Sure, dude. Talk to Zenu. <laughs> All right. So we... All know that Nicole did get remarried in 2006 to her handsome, wonderful Aussie husband, Keith Urban. Can I just share with the listeners that uh, it was only through this process that I learned that Keith Urban is Australian. 
So. <laughs> I've got a million quotes where she's just kind. Yeah. We spent time. I want to honor the marriage. There's nothing that I would go into about that. I've never discussed the intricacies. I never will. Like, she's tight-lipped about it. And I know you've got Tom from this point on, but let me just wrap with Nicole. So Tom and Isabella and Connor have cut off all contact with Nicole. She is considered an SP, a suppressive person. She's not allowed to be discussed, mentioned, or considered by them. Yikes. Both kids are way into Scientology. Isabella is now married. She lives in London. And she, just this year, I want to say like April, starting a few months ago, has been training to become an auditor in the church. Such exciting opportunities for blackmailing other people. Yay. I can't, y'all. Um, Nicole says, my kids don't call me mommy. They don't even call me mom. They call me Nicole. Like, these kids are in a cult, and calling their dad isn't going to do them a damn bit of good. Nope, can't call your, can't call your dad, because your dad is basically the cult leader. Nicole does end up in 2006 marrying Keith Urban, but uh, Nicole has a pretty good early 90s. She dates Q-Tip. She dates Lenny Kravitz. She dates Steve Bing. She, I think, definitely won at least the love part of the happy ending of the breakup. She has yeah. two daughters now with Urban. And once he went to rehab about four months in to their marriage. And by all accounts, after that, they just lived the happiest, sweetest, greatest little life with their two daughters and split their time between Australia and Nashville. Yeah. And that's kind of the thing about her. She's always seemed incredibly down to earth, even even yeah. as the wife of Tom Cruise. And it kind of made him seem more down to earth as well, because... She's not a freakazoid. No, she's totes adorable and gets all the marriage halos. I think she definitely won the breakup. Yeah. In that department. Plus, she was in the hours and like, my God, she's incredible. I'm going to go, I'm going to save. Do you want some Scientology stats now or later? You want to talk about them? You, let's, let's go ahead and carry on. Okay. Okay. So well, Mimi's done. Nicole's done. Tom is... A single guy. Sure, two down. But again, we, we've already we're already seeing signs of some impulse control problems here. He Tell gets me. engaged to Nicole really fast. He just divorces her spontaneously. It seems like, although you assume that he and his Scientology buddies were planning that for a minute. I hear he's a spontaneous chair jumper too. <sighs> a little bit. All right. So at this point, I'm going to introduce our our next character, um, one Katie Holmes, Catherine Noel Holmes. Our next character. I love it. I don't, I mean, whatever. That's okay. true. She was born in 1978, grows up in Toledo, Ohio. Her mom was, I think, kind of a stay at home mom, did a lot of like PTA, was, you know, like was involved in some causes, stuff like that. But uh, dad's a lawyer. It sounds so. like a nice, normal little, really nice little normal, childhood. Well, yeah. Yeah. When she Fantastic. is uh, 14, she starts modeling. This, I don't know, she went to New York or something for modeling. Anyway, she got noticed. Modeling worked out she's super cute she ends up in 1997's the ice storm directed by ang lee pretty sure i never saw it her real claim to fame in this period obviously is that she was on dawson's creek she played the role of joey potter the tomboy best friend of dawson who i think was best known for naming a creek after himself perfect sounds right never saw it me neither <laughs> we're just context clues anyway we are we're a little bit beyond that like that's just like a smidge out of our generation oh, yeah, i think yeah. my I was, sister's seen every absolutely. episode absolutely if sure. i were four or five years younger i would have been all yeah. over it. okay dawson's creek ran through 2003 hey tom cruise is single at that point what, what? okay after, i have this poster on my wall this guy named tom cruise apparently she kind of <sighs> did no yeah, yeah legit okay so no no nobody dawson's creek runs through 03 after which katie had a series of film roles they were kind of underwhelming her critical reviews have always been pretty mixed like i don't know it just it seems like she did not find her groove right away but at the same time she is in new york city she's she is a baby a she's a working kid. actor yeah. she is probably Going to all the cool brunches, has all the cool friends. Like, I bet she had a hell of a good thing going on. Oh, living the dream. 
So she does say, like, her work from this period, she describes as a series of bombs, and she complains that there weren't really, like, great projects just dying to sign her. She dated Joshua Jackson, who was also on Dawson's Creek. Um, uh, I know he's him. on Fringe, right? I know him from Fringe. Okay, yeah. great. See, I'm not that out of touch. Yeah. Okay, she was engaged to actor Chris Klein from 03 to 05. Obviously, that did not work out. Why not? <laughs> I actually don't know. Oh. Um, it wasn't because of Tom Cruise. Oh, really? Okay. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Just separately, like, that fizzled out. Meanwhile, back at the Trashy Divorces train depot or whatever, divorce depot, Tom Cruise had recently broken up f- from Penelope Cruise. Yeah, that was a weird... Different spelling. Cruise, double Not cruise. related. Yeah. No relation. <laughs> that would have been a weird nuptial. Super weird. So she uh, apparently was not Scientologist enough for him. She was not approved by his BFF, David? No. They dated for several years, though. Like two and years, right? Yeah, two, three, yeah. But yeah, it's Tom Cruise. He cannot marry outside of his made-up faith. So, you know, just... Sorry. Those are the intergalactic rules, babe. Sorry, Penelope. Okay, so then he dates uh, Sophia Vergara, who, as far as I can tell, when it came to the Scientology thing, was just like super nopity nope. So that didn't work out. She seems pretty much like a gal who's got her opinion pretty firmly cemented on yeah. her mouth. Super nopity yeah. nope. So they're done. All right, according to the book Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief by Lawrence Wright, which came out in, what, 2013? Does that sound right? Yes, 2013. Relatively recent book. So again, he's he's having all these relationships at a time when there were a lot of rumors about bad stuff with Scientology, but nobody had really dug in and reported it out. That really doesn't come until much, much more recently. Okay. So, according to this book by Lawrence Wright, Tom Cruise was in Madrid for the opening of a new Scientology church. Woo! He goes on this rant to his sister, who is also a big Scientologist, I think. Um, This has got to be Cass, because I think Isabella was homeschooled with Cass. Okay. uh, For a certain point, to make sure that they all got... Indoctrinated properly. Correct. Okay. Yay. That's what we... Family values. Okay. Um, so he goes on this rant to his sister about how no one is finding him a girlfriend. <laughs> right? This is Tom Cruise. This is someone who's been named, like, sexiest man alive. This and he is, can't find his own. Later, he gets into it with David Miscavige, Miscavige, whatever his name is, about, like, nobody's getting me a girlfriend. Where's my girlfriend? Maybe his instrument needs tuning. I think his instrument needed tuning. <laughs> well, Miscavige, Miscavige jumps in to remedy this problem. Of like, course, he remedies everything else. It's so amazing, though, that Tom Cruise is so lazy and so entitled that Tom Cruise thinks it's someone else's job to get Tom Cruise laid. Like, that's that hard, a, right? Like, that's difficult. That's an astonishing amount like, of... that Tom Cruise can't get himself laid. Can Tom Cruise make himself a sandwich? I don't do think you think he has a groom of the stool? Do you think he, he wipes his own butt? I mean, I That's don't... a good question. No one quite knows what the Sea Org does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so apparently, and again, this is according to Wright's book, the plan Miscavige hatched was to audition, and I use quotation marks there, various Hollywood leading ladies for the part of third wife of Tom Cruise. So there was no one already in the church that... They- would they start auditioning with people in the church that would work? So it's a little roundabout. There, there is, there's a little detour that I'm going to okay. share, but let me like share this weird sure, plan sure, sure, that sure, sure. they hatch. Okay, so the plan they hatch is to have all of these Hollywood actresses come nope. to audition for nope. Mission Impossible Jesus with Tom Cruise. Christ. No. And depending on the edit, so this includes Scarlett Johansson. Jessica Alba, Lindsay Lohan, who, hello, Scientology oh. elders. Can we ha- have a talk about things that aren't going to work out? Because they're Scientologists, I guess, to their credit, are very anti-drug. They're not into using drugs. Um, I mean, that probably 
I was going to say it might have been good for her, but... Might have. Hell. Good Lord, yeah. I could have. Pick your battles there. I don't know. Lindsay Lohan, we hope you get your life together. We really do. We really do. You talk about the butterfly effect, though. How different would the world be? Jesus, Peter. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kate Bosworth was another, and Katie Holmes. So, you know, they're supposed to come to the Celebrity Center... Scientology Celebrity Center in LA for special auditions for Mission to Impossible. Audition for with Tom Mission Cruise. Impossible. Okay. Yeah, but no, dun, they're auditioning dun, dun, them for dun, 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 dun. for wife of being Tom, Tom Cruise's Cruise. girlfriend. It's really fucking. Weird. How do you think that is Tom Cruise like behind a magic mirror? Like, uh, I've got so, so many problems. This isn't even the weirdest shit in Tom Cruise's <sighs> fucked up love life around this period of time. Okay. Just wait, it gets weirder. In late two thousand and four. An employee at Scientology's Office of Special Affairs was selected for a very important project. What was that? Actress and Scientologist, I sure wish I knew how to pronounce this woman's name because she's a really good actress, Nazanin Baniati. She is a British-Iranian actress. She was Barney's girlfriend on she How was I Met Nora. Your Mother. She was yeah. Nora on How I Met Your Mother. Was 25 years old at the time. She spends a month being specially trained to, quote, meet a high-level church official. They never told her it was Tom Cruise. They basically spent a month teaching her how to act around her future boyfriend. Oh, little problem. She already has a boyfriend. So they tell her, or perhaps they fabricate evidence that he is having an affair. Why? To get her to break up with her boyfriend. What? Who she loved. So that she can go and be Tom Cruise's girlfriend. <gasps> no. Really weird. No. Really, really weird. She had to write a 20-page essay on what she wanted out of life. She wore braces. She, they made her remove them prematurely. She had to change her hair. She had to sign two non-disclosure agreements. So Vanity Fair kind of reported this out in depth. Oh, my God. And the New York Post has a sort of summary. I'll just give you a couple paragraphs so you can understand the true whack jobness of how this works. For the first three weeks of their relationship, uh, Boniati was only allowed to talk to Cruz and his entourage, no one else. No contact with outsiders. No, what? can't call your parents. I guess her mom was a Scientologist too. So in any case, Cruz didn't like the way her incisor teeth looked. He wanted them redone. Her hair also met with scrutiny. Stop, 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 stop. Seriously? Mm-hmm. And she had just removed braces, which might have, you know, been there to fix the yep. incisor teeth thing. I don't know. This okay. is horrible. Yeah, Tom Cruise seems like a real peach here. Uh, her hair also met with scrutiny, and Cruise's own stylist, Chris McMillan, was called. When Cruise received the church's Freedom Medal of Valor, they just make shit up. They just make shit Boniati up. Boniati told him, very well done. I hear Tah- uh, Tahani's voice yeah, in my head for, for it. Sure. But anyway, very well done. And subsequently spent hours per day undergoing treatments to help her understand one did not speak to Tom Cruise like this. You don't give him a compliment? Good job, buddy. They might be sleeping together, but they were not equals. Boniati's last real time with Cruz or throat was on a trip to Telluride with the star's entourage along, wait, fluffing wait. him. It doesn't sound like he wants a girlfriend. It sounds like he needs a sex doll. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, she has a fall from a snowmobile and she's pretty banged up and she's got menstrual cramps and she asks for like, can I get some aspirin? And they're like, no, because we're Scientologists, and your pain does not rise to the level of needing medication, which we frown upon. I just fell off a... Oh, my God. Yeah, super cool. So she is in pain and isolated. Again, this is the New York Post. Boniati's only resource, a credit card belonging to Cruz's production company. She bursts into tears. She was told to go chat with the Miscavages, and after reportedly offending David by politely asking him to repeat himself a few times... She was shipped off to a Scientology outpost in Florida where she had to scrub toilets with toothbrushes. She had to dig ditches in the night. She had to like stand on street corners hawking Dianetics to passers-by for months. She never saw Tom Cruise again. Oh my God. She bailed on Scientology. I wonder how long that took. God, not long. I mean, she was out. So more recently, her acting roles have included the character of Nora. Uh, a girlfriend of Barney Stinson on How I Met Your Mother, and she was a CIA analyst named Farah Shirazi on Homeland. Not a season I've watched yet, but I will get to it. There is decidedly life for actors after they leave Scientology. 
for sure. Well, because so many actors are like, oh, it's Scientology that's doing it for me. Yeah. Like John Travolta, when he first started in Hollywood, right, was right. really looking to get parts, and he joins the It's a church. big network. It is a big, and big network. It's, it's not just actors. It's, yeah, it's... Well, that's it. And he talks about, like, once you get parts... You don't want to do anything to, oh, well, clearly this is working for me. Right. I joined the church and now I'm super successful. Yeah. But I think to your point, it's a cult. <laughs> you can act without being a Scientologist, people. Right. And But I do, I think people fear that if they leave the cult that professional Their opportunities with, yeah, sure. because the Scientology network is quite strong, it seems. All right. In April 2005... So Boniati is, I guess, in Florida at this point. Ms. Cavage gets Katie Holmes, who happens to be Catholic, as Tom Cruise was uh, once upon a time, to the Celebrity Center. And thus, does she fall into Tom Cruise's orbit? No, no. Not for a Mission Impossible movie. She had apparently caught Ms. Cavage's eye because in a 2004 interview... She admitted to having a big crush on Tom Cruise. Oh, Poster no. on the wall. Oh. No. Heart around it. Little lipstick kiss marks. Anyway. A little cross TCKH. Yeah. And so I I don't, like, I'm, again, I think the Lindsay Lohan idea was just flawed from the start, guys. Yeah, ill-fated. That was a bad one. <laughs> so, yeah, Katie Holmes it is. Their relationship begins she, of course, begins studying Scientology in earnest because that's how you keep Tom Cruise. Have you met my new boyfriend? He's so dreamy. I had a picture of him on my wall for years. I love him. Their first public appearance is in Rome. Cruise was receiving an award. Presumably, she did not say very well done when he received it. <laughs> a hanger-on told reporters that they had been dating for a couple of weeks. At that point, this goes off like a rocket because Mr. Impulse Control Man is the subject of the story. I don't know even what to say here. A month later, Cruz has his infamous Oprah interview oh, where he Oprah. just, he cannot contain, he is bouncing around the set. He jumps on the couch, jumps off the couch. I like, love her. Yeah. And he's like, I'm in love. I'm in love. And it's one of those things where you want to be cool. Like, yeah, I like her. That's not how I feel. <laughs> okay, dude. Okay. You know, it makes me feel cool. Jumping up and down on the couch when I was four. Sure. And like Katie Holmes, again, she's in her 20s. Tom Cruise is on national television screaming his love for her. Acting it's a fool. He's got to be in 1962. Weird. What year was this? So he's this, a middle aged, grown man. This was 05. Yeah. Incapable of clearly having a real relationship with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, Oprah. So, what's a girl dating the public face of Scientology to do but convert to Scientology? Oh, no. So she does. <laughs> And while this clearly paved the way for the couple to become engaged, which they became engaged after seven weeks of dating, Mr. What? Impulse Control Man. Seven weeks? Seven weeks. It also obviously offered her some professional assistance with those pesky low rent projects that kept bombing at the box office. I'm sure it, I'm sure like as a whole package, it seemed really, I get Tom Cruise. I get the Scientology Network in Hollywood. I get like, this is cool. For Katie Holmes. Everything's coming up roses. Yeah. I mean, and Scientology loves its celebrity endorsers so much that it appears to have created an entire slave cast to see to their needs. So that's cool, right? Wait a minute. A slave cast? Sea Org? I mean, there's... Okay, I just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. Kind of. I don't know that it's all Sea Org. There may be other orgs. Uh, in it, but well, they do a lot. They're I hear they're great cleaners. They're great baby makers. Sure, they're apparently not great baby sitters, which we will soon oh, hear about. In any case, Tom Cruise pops the question to Katie Holmes at the Eiffel Tower. Seven weeks. So, in fairness to him, good choice of location, fella. Super good. Terrible that... impulse control, but nice, nice spot. That is the first thing I've heard in this story that I like. Oh yeah. Right? I was like, well, I can't let that go without praising Tom Cruise for that, at least. One okay. tiny, tiny, tiny tick mark on the good side. Can you say Eiffel Tower in French? La Tour Eiffel. There you go. The following year, before they got married even, baby Suri is born. April 18, 2006. It is the first anniversary of their date, of their first date. 
What? I don't know if that is. Co- I don't Engage know. Engage she- married baby all within a a year of their first date. Of their first That's date. incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah. No, this whole story is kooky. But yeah, Mr. Impulse Control Man. Now. I don't know if I knew how you liked your coffee after here. <laughs> like, I. That's wow. All right, November 2006, so Suri's a few months old. They get married in a ceremony in Italy. And Leah Remini, Scientology whistleblower extraordinaire, she was at the wedding. She was invited to the wedding. Oh, how nice, because she's in the cult too. No, because she's friends with Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony, who at the time were married. They probably were on the Project Celebrity list. She is invited on the condition that she bring her friends J-Lo and Mark Anthony. And then apparently all the Scientology goons spent the entire, because I'm sure they were in Italy for several days, they spent the entire time trying to separate J-Lo from Leah Remini. It's a trap. Well, J-Lo is no fool, say what you will. She's like, no, dude, this is my buddy Leah. I'm here with her back off. And so like... Good for her. So, but the Scientology people are furious. Furious. And (sighs) Leah Remini can't do anything about it because she's having fun with her friend. But she, like, anyway, she ended up in big trouble for this wedding. I was about to say, so it's all, it all becomes her fault. It's all her fault, yeah. So, yeah, at this fucking wedding, it's an official Scientology event, first of all. David Miscavige was, like, the best man or whatever the Scientology equivalent is because they got married in a Scientology ceremony, whatever the fuck that looks like. I pledge myself to you for a billion, billion years and all of the stars in the sky. I have no idea. I'm just guessing. I'm just riffing now. Well, that's the thing. When you're Sea Org, you join for a one billion, billion years. years. Uh-huh. Because so, you keep reincarnating. Exactly. And so you so just have to... binding yourself to them for all sorts of existences that Jesus you can't even Christ. know what... You know what? Don't do it. Run away. Fast. Okay. Star-studded affair, obviously. Yeah. Leah Remini's chilling with J-Lo. Blah, blah, blah. So because of, I don't, I don't know all, what all went down at this wedding, but I guess Leah Remini, there were some other things, I guess. Uh, from what I understand, the thing that made her really suspicious during this wedding is that Shelly Miscavige was not there. It was the first time that, because David and his wife Shelly go everywhere together. Then Leah thought it was really unusual that Shelly wasn't there. So she started asking around. Oh. Hey, where's Shelly? Where's oh. Shelly? Why isn't Shelly here? And wasn't getting a direct answer because. And everybody no was one... being super shady about it because hmm. we'd all like to know where Shelly is. Hmm. They got married August 2000, or 2006? Yes, November 2006. So the last time Shelly was seen in public was August 2007. Just so a year FYI. Later. Okay, interesting. So 13 years ago. I have a theory that we we can discuss at the end. Perfect. Okay. Anyway, because Leah Remini apparently was disturbing all of the Scientology muckety mucks at this event. I ask you questions. Okay, so their little snitch reports are called knowledge reports. (laughs) Katie Holmes wrote a knowledge report about a Leah report? a snitch report about Leah Remini and her disturbing behavior at my wedding and i just have this like in my soul i i feel like they told Katie Holmes to write a knowledge like i just don't think i just don't think this was her original work let's put it that way well i think Leah Remney wrote a snitch report like hey i'm really concerned about the things that are going on here they they all that's everybody writes snitch reports about everybody else and then everybody piled on her yeah 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 so she spent jesus months they put her through auditing sessions for at least weeks after this oh god she had to send letters of apology to jj abrams of like what the fuck what even the i fuck? just so this culture of snitching is sorry constant. your show lost sucked it at the end guess that's my fault too so this culture of snitching is constant throughout Scientology, and it's part of the basic terrorism that Scientology inflicts on its non-celebrity members. So, okay. So now Katie and Tom are married, apparently happily, for a while. Sure. So Zuri's for, cute. She's a cute baby. Yeah, sure. I mean, have you seen the parents? My God. Right. So 
several years go by. They are like a Hollywood super couple. Tom Cat. Tom is Cat. their Brangelina nom de plume. That is, I'd forgotten whatever. about Tom Cat. I actually had to. Anyway, Tom Cat's back. Just for this episode, though. <laughs> so yeah, like at this point in time, the reports about Scientology's dark side were still kind of like fragmented and and the stuff of rumor. So, but I'm pretty sure Katie Holmes is kind of getting wiser and wiser over time. Also, that professional boost that I think she probably thought she was going to get by marrying Tom Cruise and being part of Scientology, it never really materialized because Tom Cruise is a dick and he's controlling and he yeah. vets all of her projects. And I guess like she takes a year off after Suri's born. I'm sure he was all for that. Like she starts appearing again on television in 08. She has her Broadway debut, but the only significant role she took during their marriage, I think was when she played Naomi, the slutty pumpkin in the How I Met Your Mother episode. It's a fine, fine performance. The slutty pumpkin returns. So, so far, my How I Met Your Mother count in this one's three. Because Sofia Vergara dated and married sweet, stupid Brad. Bro code, bro brunch brother. Oh, there you go. There you go. We have Nora and slutty pumpkin. Yeah. There we go. That's Okay. We'll cool, see cool. how many more we rack up. All right, that's all That's all a joke. Okay, it appears that Tom Cruise is super controlling, and any project that she was considering had to meet his exacting standards. I won't say high standards. I'll just say Tom Cruise what? standards. I, uh... So instead of seeing her career take off through you know, the Scientology network, it seems like maybe she saw her husband stamping out any hope she might have had of coming into her own in Hollywood. Oh, no. His people took over all of the professional roles that a working actor needs, like PR, management, security, all this stuff. And she was sort of an appendage while he just took, you know, big budget film role after big budget film role. Like he was constantly working. He does seem to be a workaholic. Like he produces a ton of material. Sure. Um, so, you know, whatever. In mid June of 2012, she does this weird thing where she takes a trip to China to be a celebrity ambassador at a figure skating show or. Okay. Ice dancing, I, I don't know. And it was like a weird thing, and uh, LaneyGossip.com thought it was strange at the time. Suri is home with dad. So I've seen this reported a couple different ways. So one version of the story is that she gets home to the States and realizes that Tom was not taking care of Suri. He had handed Suri off to a bunch of Scientologists. To a bunch of Sea Orgers? That Katie didn't know. No. Just... No. Randos in the no. church. And if you're Tom Cruise, like, that's fine, I guess. But if you're the mother of a child. If you're a mother of a child, you're, no, you're, that's not cool. I don't care if strangers are part of the church. I care that strangers had my baby for days. Like, yeah, you dick. Yeah, not cool. Okay, so that is one version of the story. So when this happens, according to this version of the story, Katie Holmes finally realizes that she's in a cult and she calls her dad. Good for her. Yeah. Call your dad, Katie. The other version of the story is that she had already called her dad, and dad somehow started getting burner phones to her while she was in China. Oh, that's smart. Because all of her communications are monitored by Scientology. Well, yeah, Tom was wiretapping Nicole. Why wouldn't he be wiretapping her? Exactly right. So she has to get, she has to get burner phones. This chick has a plan. I love a and plan. And it is cool because... I love a get the fuck out and save your life plan. Yeah, I mean, so another, also from LaneyGossip.com, apparently Tom's, the older kids, Nicole and Isabella, had been, like, talking to Surrey about particular Scientology work camp in California called Gold Base, which is, I think, where Miss Cavage mostly lives. Work, Surrey's like three. What, uh, they're starting early with the indoctrination. Like, she's a baby. Yeah. It's run by like a thousand Sea Org members who live in extreme duress. They're paid about $50 a week for their labor unless they're in trouble and they're all always in trouble. Like this is oh a fear-based organization. This is horrible. So one report that I saw about the uh, Sea Org workers at Gold Base is that on average they actually receive something like $15 a week for putting in sometimes 16-hour days for weeks at a time. The meal costs... I mean, this is a slave labor camp. God doesn't want you to do this. This is not a... 
the yeah the they what they spend on meals per person at gold base is less than a dollar per person per meal the prison system in california spends more money on food for people oh my god then then this organization that is literally like flooded with cash by all accounts i've got 1.75 billion yeah in the latest estimates that i've seen almost two billion dollars you can feed your people lunch yeah so katie holmes has gotten wise to to what's happening here her parents had been super worried about her for a long time they were super worried about surrey's future oh i bet Tom is controlling Scientology brainwashes people like it was just a thing and Katie had been growing less and less happy with the marriage professionally she was shut off just she was not living her own life anymore because Tom Cruise is a dick and Scientology is crazy so uh, she was also definitely aware that Nicole Kidman has no relationship with her children because of Tom's slave powered fake religion and Katie Holmes knew that she was not doing that. That is what she knew. So she reaches out to her dad, call your dad, and he devises a scheme for swapping out the cell phones to get burner phones. Dad does a bunch of cool stuff here. This is like, I love it when dads come to the rescue. This is a a pretty great plan. Uh, So she spends two or three weeks through again with burner phones, hiring divorce lawyers in three states. I didn't find specifically i didn't find their names but i think it was new york california and florida that would make sense would be my guess she ultimately files in new york city which is much tighter it's got new york has great privacy laws if she had filed in florida we would all know the details every detail of that trash great okay anyway dad goes to katie's old pr people and hires them back and is like hey listen got a thing that's gonna happen and we're gonna need you to jump in on a dime. When and we when we pull the trigger, you need to, yep. yeah. And they do. Um, she rents a new apartment in New York. Tom's in Iceland. She Does exp- Tom have any feelings about this? He thought it was great because the building that she rented the apartment in has underground parking. And so suddenly she has more privacy from the paparazzi who are always following her around when she's in New York City. Maybe. Okay, well, good. So Tom is like... Underground parking. Katie, that seems perfect. We hate the press. Like, cool. Also, this allows her to surreptitiously move all of her stuff out of their apartment and into her own. It's a good plan. Worked flawlessly, too. I mean, she blindsided Tom Cruise on June 29th, 2012. Surprise filing of the century. She technically filed as anonymous, but her newly rehired PR people were on it. People Magazine was their first, you know, bomb drop. And How's that feel, Tommy? How's that feel, Tommy? How's, how's karma? Feel coming back around to kick you in your instrument. Yeah, whatever fury he... Because, again, this kid, she gave birth to the chosen one if you're a Scientologist. Oh, for sure. Like, they made... they Like, they played match... The church played matchmaker for them. And then you've got two of the most beautiful living humans on the planet reproduce... I mean, holy shit. Surrey Cruz was going to rule the world. Oh, I bet. Yeah, this was shockwaves in Scientology. Yeah, well, no. Um, So, yeah, whatever fury they felt, she was way ahead of them. Like, way ahead. Because he's doing things like jumping on couches on national television, and she's raising a baby. Like, Sure. 11 days after the filing, Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise sign off on, it's a private agreement, and no one's seen it but them. But 11 it, days? It gave Katie <gasps> custody of Surrey. It gave Tom rights to visitation. And there are caveats. Tom is prohibited from attempting to create alienation in the relationship between Surrey Cruz and Katie Holmes. Just, you are not Good. allowed to poison my child's mind. Right? Like Which, you did like with you your... Did. So she took every... Do you think she called Nicole? All right. What do I, what do I need to know? I honestly don't know that Nicole would trust right i don't know that i don't know that uh, nicole would trust like, her yeah, to you're being monitored I have a real con- yeah. yeah wow i like i i strongly doubt that before divorcing tom cruise that she called nicole maybe after so katie's no dummy or katie's dad is no dummy katie's no dummy and her dad's no dummy perfect and fortunately like her dad super effective dad good dadding there dad wow 
So I think with, uh, I, I'm just kind of reading between the lines on what's been reported. Cause again, it's obviously she got custody. Sure. But what I think they agreed on is that each, each one, she returned to Catholicism after the divorce and like is apparently an active churchgoer. So the, the agreement I think was that each parent was welcome to discuss their views on religion and faith with the child and nobody could pressure her into being one thing or another. Probably the idea was that when she was with Tom, she would do Scientology things. And when she was with mom, she would go to Catholic church on Sunday, whatever. Um, you had some info about Tom Cruise's deep Don relationship hasn't with seen his story since like 2015 or something. Yeah. was a like, it's been a few years and I think it's because Katie Holmes is to his mind, polluting the child SP. She's SP. with Catholicism. Uh, so she's like, she's a broken toy now. Can you imagine? Well, but if you're a suppressive person, Scientology, they can't have any contact with you. This is different than the other acronym that I saw, potential trouble source, a PTS. <laughs> you can still talk to PTSs, but if you're a SP, you Scientology finds you. Like, you cannot have any contact with them. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if Tom Cruise wanted to have a relationship with his daughter, though, they can do things like organize pickups. So, like, her sure. assistant would bring Suri to somebody's be picked up by his assistant. Somebody's assistant should be talking to somebody's assistant. Right, like, yeah. you, if, if he's just... Because, like, there are a lot of parents who can't be in a room together without viciously fighting. And you can... You can arrange contractually that. to, yeah, there's, yeah. there are ways around that and you can wow. still see your kid and still be with your kid. Like apparently that is not his priority. Well, he's too busy getting his older kids set up to yeah take over his third and fourth in Scientology because apparently he's number two now. Fucking zombies. Okay. So yes, Katie Holmes left Scientology, returned to the Roman Catholic church, which has two millennia of experience convincing people to be and remain Catholic. It's true. It's true. It's going to be an interesting dynamic in Suri's life. Although if dad has completely cut her off, then it won't be. She'll probably just be whatever. She'll probably end up being a nun. It's not, not a N-U-N, but a, you know, the nuns, the N-O-N, N-O-N-E's. The thing where you're just nothing. You have no particular faith. It's just not a... Yeah, it'll be interesting. Not a big interest for you. Seems to be the way of the future. She could be a nun too. Could be. Professionally, Katie Holmes has continued acting on TV, in film, on Broadway. Good for she her. has also moved into directing and producing. Oh, nice. Uh, interestingly, she has been romantically linked to actor and comedian Jamie Foxx for, for years, like I think four years now. Yeah. And they've really kept it very quiet. Super until, quiet. Like, they attended the Met Gala together this year. Oh, camp? Camp, camp? Oh, I guess it was, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, they, they're sort of doing their coming out and it's not clear she may just have been because they were tomcat right like she may just not have wanted the press involved in her relationship it is also conceivable that confidentiality that there yeah that she was obligated to keep things on the down low for a period of years so that as not sense. to embarrass tom cruise who does not appear to uh have followed up with another relationship at least thus far no public romances anyway. Uh, I'm sure they're continuing to drag 25-year-olds out of various offices in the Sea Org and throw them at Tom Cruise when he's feeling lonely. He keeps making movies, of course, sure. but I do have to say that uh, after doing the reading on this one, I'm not super interested in watching even one of them. Just, like, these days, like, we all know what Scientology is now. There's really just no disputing what Scientology is now. And Tom Cruise is a very bad person for promoting that. No, he's number two. If this acting thing doesn't work out for him, he definitely has a job with oh, BFF David yeah. running the church. Yeah, but I mean, that alone makes you a bad person. Like, I'm sorry if you're part of that. It's shameful. He is the beneficiary of slave labor, like directly. $15 a week in California is not a wage. <laughs> it's... Do they wear red red robes and have big white hats? <laughs> I, too? Don't, I don't know. I, I'm, sh I'm sure on costume night. that's. Gee, this wear. is horrible. 
Yeah, the stories are really, really terrible. Is that is that the end of your story? Uh, I'm not saying that like I want it to be over. I'm just it saying is, is that, it, yeah. It is. I see the blankness at the end of the screen. Oh, it's all screen. blank like Tom Cruise's soul. Blank like Tom Cruise's soul. All right. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the trashy the divorce of... not. Okay, so there were some uplifting things. Let's talk about trash bags. Trash cans. Trash cans. Intergalactic. Tom Cruise is an intergalactic trash can. Hardcore. It's fresh Hard off the fresh core. off Xenu's ship of lies. Flaming. I mean, they can't flame because there's no oxygen in space. But if they could. If they could, they would. They would be. Mimi Rogers and Tom Cruise. You started this, Mimi. Like I blame you. This is yeah, your it's fault. Fair. It's fair. He could have been a nice Catholic actor. Go into his parish. Yeah, eccentric making... but not but not this like yeah, well, he's always had like a religious calling, so sure, I get it. Like, faith's important to you. Didn't know faith in aliens was gonna take over. I don't know. I blame Mimi Rogers. I'm happy she's back out. By all accounts, their divorce. Well, I don't know. My instrument needed tuning. That's pretty great. I don't know. Three and a half. Seems- I mean, he gets five thousand trash it, yeah. cans. He gets a billion years of trash cans. One billion, just keep reincarnating and coming back for You're more trash. still a trash fucker. can. And we'll pay you $15 a week just to take out the trash. All you will ever be years. is a trash can for a billion years. No, I blame Mimi Rogers, so she's a little higher on my scale. Would you agree? Yeah. All right. Nicole Kidman just gets halos. That's fair. I love her. And she, fuck, but she got he, I mean, that. Man. Out of nowhere. And he really, uh, in terms of the public anyway, he's never explained why. Like, the church got Ask him. Ask Nicole. She knows Ask why. David. He knows why. Yeah, right. So. I mean, their divorce was super trashy. There is nothing trashy about her. Right. So we're going to give her some Debbie Reynolds style halos. I like it. I'm going to add another billion trash cans onto Tom Cruise. So he can work multitudes of intergalactic lifetimes. That sounds good. All right. Talk to me about Katie. First of all, well done, Katie Holmes. Well, congrats. Really well done. Best you one. rescued yourself and you rescued your kid. That's a fucking miracle. Yep. Halo's That's for you. That's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Scientology steals. Well, we're not going to say they steal. We wouldn't say they steal children. Others might say they steal children. Katie Some. Holmes did not let them steal her child. And nope. that is what matters. That's badass. Good job, yep. Katie. Yep, Good yep. job. You know, Tom Cruise just had to take it. But he, and they knew, like they, they knew 11 days. They knew they'd lost. Well, and who knows what she's already prepped. Like, make your plan. If you're determined to leave, make your plan and do and it. And again, I'm certain that as, like, I'm certain they were able to non-disclosure her as part of the terms of the settlement there are so many things that she will never be able to tell the world about her time with tom cruise and scientology we talked a little bit about that in our patreon app this week with erica and about oj and nicole like the doctor that nicole went to after it's like if you're leaving an abuser you make a plan and you have to cease all contact yes otherwise you're abuser or threatener. So I'm not saying Tom Cruise abused Katie Holmes right. physically in any way, but that is like you made a plan, you stuck to it. Nobody knew about your plan. Yep. That's amazing. She gets some halos too. Yeah, I think so. I really do. Like getting that kid out of that A plus. So Tom Cruise has two billion intergalactic Cosmic trash cans. Flaming trash cans. Perfect. Space trash cans. We got halos for Katie. Halos for Nicole. Mm -hmm. Mimi, I... Mimi, we hope you have given a lot of thought to poor life choices you've made in the past. I think Mimi probably has. Okay. She's done. I mean, I don't know. All right. Well, hey, let's... Please uh, no one sue us. (laughs) We're gonna... We have very little... Uh, um, thanks for tuning in while we're here at Beach Week. I know our audio is a little wacky. Sure. My voice is a little hoarse. It really doesn't hurt you guys. It's cool. Okay. We're going to enjoy our last day on a rainy, rainy beach. I love it. And it's cooled off so much because of the rain, and I will take it. Yeah, <sighs> you got some more 
fish to catch and release. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We have a little bit more liquor left, some cold cuts to finish up. Right. We're going to get back to vacationing now. Yeah. uh, We appreciate all of you. Hey, everybody. We'll be back with a regular episode next week. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Keep it trashy. Keep it trashy. Keep it BG. Hey, stay single. Stay Don't Sandy. marry Tom Cruise. Never marry Tom Cruise. Never, ever, ever marry Tom Cruise. And if anybody wants to um, create a situation for you that is clearly designed to generate blackmail material, Run. don't let them. Go, go. Lie. Go, go. Make up truly fanciful lies to tell them. Call your dad. And then Call delight when they try to hold it over you. Oh, Go, I'm just trying to think of the best lie I can make up off the top of Go on about the year that you just spent shoplifting Pez dispensers from various <sighs> stores. And that for a time you had a collection of like $15,000 worth of Pez dispensers, all of which you had stolen. I have a Tell storage them area that. I keep them in. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All, right, All we, right, what's the most outrageous uh, secret and sin lie you'd tell to your Scientology auditor? Anyway, it's the Pez dispenser thing for sure. Yeah. Keep it trashy, y'all. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Trashy Divorces is written and produced by us, Stacy and Alicia for Hemlock Creatives. You can contact us at trashydivorces at gmail.com. Our art is by Sydney B. Smith. You can find her at Sydney B. Smith at carbonmade.com. Our music is used with the permission of Ratsy, who you can find on Ratsy's store on Instagram. Want to check out our sources, soundtracks, and other notable episode info? Visit TrashyDivorces.com on the web. Enjoy early ad-free releases, regular bonus stories, follow-ups, and more by joining us at Patreon.com slash TrashyDivorces, starting at just $2 a month. We have merchandise available online. Get your Trashy Divorces gear at bit.ly slash trashy merch. And thanks to What a Maneuver for doing such a great job with all of our cool threads. We appreciate all of your ratings and reviews. And if you leave us a five-star review on iTunes, send us a picture of it and we'll ship you some Trashy Divorces stickers and such anywhere in the world. Don't feel left out because you're in Australia, South Korea, the United Arab Emirates, South Africa, Sweden, or any of the other 58 countries and counting where people are listening. Just email us at TrashyDivorces at gmail.com. And last but not least, check us out on social. We are at Trashy Divorces at Instagram, which Alicia mostly handles, Twitter, which Stacy mostly handles, and Facebook, which we share the responsibility about. We also have a Trashy Divorces discussion group on Facebook if you want to chat with other Trashy Divorces listeners. Thanks again for listening. Keep it trashy, y'all.